All right, shalom, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan, the Code Searcher, and my, we got a lot to talk about, you guys. <laughs> you know, when I get a text from my mom saying, when's the next video coming out? It's been a little too long since I've done one. So so here's the video, all right? Um, a lot going on, many codes that I'm working on, but uh, I want to talk about something that really is not being touched on right now when it comes to the eclipse uh, season that we're currently in. Um, everybody's talking about April 8th, but no one's talking about the one that's about to happen on the 25th. And it just so happens to coincide with the Hebrew calendar this year. If you're on the lunar solar calendar and you know how to, to uh, cite the year as it uh, applies to the equinox, which by the way is today. Today is the spring equinox. So if we are Starting the year, according to um, historical accounts, that would be the new moon closest to the uh, equinox, which would have been March 10th, making March 25th the Passover. And that happens to be the next eclipse that we're, we're going to see. It is actually a blood moon that is going to be over the United States. And let me just take you to the chart and show you that right now. Before we get into what I have for you, again, I got a lot to share, you guys. I got uh, we're going to talk about the Demon Comet. We're going to talk about um, Jim Staley's current uh, video he put out. It's going viral right now, and, and comment on some of the things that he says in that video that seems um, to be relevant and uh, something that we've seen in the codes, particularly Gog and Magog. Okay, we're also going to look at um, this eclipse chart. Uh, I do have some codes that I've been working on. I want to particularly talk about the the Trump new Trump code that I've uh, been working on that came from Scott. And uh, let's just get into it now. So March 25th is the next eclipse, you guys. Do you even know that? Do you know that there's going to be a blood moon scene in these areas here? Um, and that is the full moon, March 25th in these areas right here. And this is kind of how it plays out um, as the full moon is moving over these areas. Notice where it's going to be seen coming to its full eclipse, almost full eclipse. There's going to be just a little slight sliver of bright white light on one corner of the moon. But for the most part, um, it is going to be uh, fully red. And this is because it comes into the shadow of the earth as it's reflected on to the surface there. And so um, a greater area is going to see this. Uh, as you can see, everything in the um, pink area right there is going to see this, this eclipse. So it's significant to, to the people in those areas. Um, nothing to, to say that anything's going to happen on the day of an eclipse. That's not what these are about. The eclipses happen to warn us of something that's coming down the road. OK, so keep that in mind. This is happening on Passover, which is something that's happened before. Sometimes we see it in tetrads. Sometimes we see it in triads. And we're going to look at another chart here in just a minute. I'm going to show you what that is and how many we've seen over the years. Many of you remember the, the uh, blood moon tetrads of the 2014, 2015 year uh, in, during that season where we had. Um, a blood moon on Passover and then Sukkot and then Passover and Sukkot again. Okay, that's called a, a tetrad. Then we would see it again in a, in a series of threes called a triad. Uh, so again, we will all see, if you live in this area, a blood red moon right above. Uh, some in some in low in horizon, some above your, uh, like where I am in Hawaii, it will be right above our head. So it'll be something to pay attention to. So let me just take you now to a chart from a friend of mine, uh, Louis Vega, just to kind of show you what's what we've seen already, right? We've seen a lot. Remember back in the, you know, from 2011, really starting there, going through 2014, 2015, uh, through to 2018, the number of blood red moons we've, we've seen. And they were all warnings to us, okay? Now, the rarity of these other eclipses that have come, the one on August 21st, 2017, and then the one that's coming on April 8th, that is also rare, okay? Then the fact that we have a comment, Pons Brooks, which has been 
dubbed the demon comet or the devil comet because of the horns that is on it, that is also going to be in the same area and possibly seen when, when the sun is covered by the moon. Okay, so that is a very rare event. So let's just kind of look at where we are right now. All right, so on the chart here, here's April 8th, the next eclipse that we're going to uh, see. And if you notice, right close to that, we have a moon there, which is, and it's not, he, do, he doesn't have it colored red, um, but it is going to be red, okay? And maybe not as dark red as we've seen uh, previously, but definitely going to be a, a blood moon, okay? Uh, this typically happens when you have a, an eclipse season. For every solar eclipse, you're going to have a blood moon that goes with it on the other side of the Maseroth, okay? So directly across the Maseroth. This one's going to happen in um, Libra, okay? And then on the other side, at five degrees Libra, and on the other side, April 8th, leaving the sign of Pisces, the sun is going to be moving into the sign of Aries at five degrees. And that is exactly where the eclipse happens right there. But then notice right after that, in the, in the immediate uh, time frame of 2025 and going into 2026, and then I know further, even though this chart doesn't show that, we're going to see another tetrad um, a little bit down the road past that a few years where a cycle repeats itself. Significant, very significant. This is why I say that. I want to take you back in time. Before we go to Jim Staley's video, I want to take you back in time to 2017, some six, seven years ago, when I was look just like this, looking at these signs, looking at the codes. And uh, I want to show you what, what I said. I think it's pretty, you know, uh, self-evident. In, in that video, that these signs actually mean something's coming down the road. So let me show you what I'm talking about here in this video I did in 2017. Yes, 149,000 views that it got since I put that out years ago. Um, but I want to share this with you now and show you what I said here. So here, let's pay attention to this and then we'll move right along, you guys. And uh, can you guess what I want to talk about? Solar eclipse. Um, I don't mean to make light of it either, because uh, historically, uh, the ramifications of um, this kind of event usually uh, is very profound. So uh, please allow me to take a few minutes of your time uh, to show you a few things that I've come across and what I've discovered in the codes. Now, there were... I don't know, hundred of you that saw a video I uploaded um, around three o'clock in the morning, and I very promptly took it down. Mm -hmm. And I just want to explain that. Um, when you have stops me three times from doing a video or putting up a table, I know it's very clear there's something else he wants to show me. So the table I had was incomplete, uh, and that is why the video came down. Uh, and indeed, he showed me some some more things uh, that were extremely. Um, well, convincing. Um, if you allow me to show you this to you, I think um, you'll see something really profound here as well. Uh, so, without further ado, let's just look at uh, solar eclipses historically. And, let me just let me just say this, but uh, before I go, go a little further, you guys, there's a couple times that I misspeak because it was kind of late when I was doing this video. It was after midnight. Uh, I say World War One, uh, two, when I mean World War One, and so on. It's it's not uh, egregious, but I do misspeak. Uh, because of the hour uh, that I did this. But uh, pay attention to what I say at, at some of these anomalies here. Uh, I want to thank Brother Steve at Discover Ministries, who um, brought this to my attention in one of his recent presentations. August 21st, 1914. Now, the solar eclipse we're going to see is August 24th, uh, 2017. So roughly 100 years ago, uh, thereabouts, there was a solar eclipse. Like right there. Across like right there, I just said the 24th when I meant to say the 20, 21st. Um, simple ones like that. And again, it was late at night. Um, Europe. And not too long after that, folks. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I think World War II was just getting started about two months. So the point behind this was how war is usually tied to these different eclipse patterns. But uh, watch what I say. Um, and then there was... Um, 
a solar eclipse. Now this is always, always throughout time, have been a bad omen or some sort of, a, of, of sign from the Most High. Uh, he's telling us something, the scriptures are very clear, that he uses signs and wonders from the sun, moon, and stars to communicate with the Maserat. Now, at World War I, um, some nine mil million combatants were killed, and seven million more civilians died uh, after that. So take that into consideration. It was a solar eclipse, a very profound one. And uh, then World War II, excuse me, World War I, uh, incidentally, there, there was one also in uh, World War II, uh, even greater casualties there. Uh, but before we go to World War II, um, June 8th, 1918, uh, the path that you're going to see here in August is the very same path that went across. All right, so this is the same path I'm pointing out, June 8th, 1918, that went across from Oregon all the way down to South Carolina, the very same one. Now, this is ha hasn't happened yet. This is still further down the road because this is 2017 when I was... Uh, <laughs> talking about this but watch what i say some well just just a moment here the united states in 1918 now why is this significant um well at the time that this went across america was entering into what would would be the worst pandemic uh, the world had ever seen up until that time some 500 million people pandemic um, were affected by this and some hundred million um died uh, i think it's somewhere around six hundred and seventy thousand. and this is a couple of years before covid okay and this is why when i saw what was happening in china at the time struck me as aha this is it and this was three years into the the seven-year pattern that we are currently in right roughly around there so I was pointing out that these things usually are telling us something very profound. Americans. So at the time of the crossing of this, um, this eclipse, America was just getting started with um, a plague that was striking the nation. And, and this uh, thing went right across, just as it's going to do um, in just less than a month from now. So. Um, that's August 21st, 2017, very same path. Now, does this mean anything? Does it mean there's going to be war? Is there going to be a plague? Uh, what's going to happen? I'm not saying something's going to happen on the day, folks, please. I'm Notice what I said. I wasn't predicting something was going to happen on that day because these eclipses usually foretell something that's coming down the road. And so I was just kind of throwing it out there based on patterns and based on things that I was seeing in the codes. War, pestilence, and famine. You've heard me talking about that for several years. It's because the codes are pointing in that direction. And so I was just using logic. Okay, is it possible um, that we're in this cycle where we're going to see pandemic and possibly a world war? And now, at this time, Ukraine had not been invaded. And by the way, I do believe that's the spark. And then what we've seen in Israel on, on October 7th, also a spark, regional, Gog and Magog, is it, everything is pulling together to that direction, you guys. I'm not making any predictions here. I'm making an educated um, observation here. And then I'm, I'm about to show you something in the scriptures that the Father put there 3,500 years ago. Because the access term we're going to look at is Eclipse 777, which is the Hebrew year, 5777 this year, Jubilee. Quite possibly, um, and here we have this very significant. And that was just an assumption, you guys, with um, you know the mention of jubilee there. I've I've no no data that indicates that was indeed a jubilee year, but it, the, the year seven 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 is is very significant. Okay, solar um, eclipse upon us. So um, let me just before we go there, I want to take you back to Yellowstone first, because not too long ago we just talked about Yellowstone, and if you recall. It has the eclipse in here. You see, this particular table uh, is a Torah code. It is found exclusively in the Torah. Uh, and I believe it does um, resonate judgment. Uh, it's very clear of that. Many of you are looking for this rapture uh, to take place in September. Well, I believe there's a catching away that is definitely connected. Yeshua will fulfill the remaining feast to the moment. Uh, so, But I do believe it's 
connected to the second coming, not a pre-trib rapture. We will see some tribulation, folks. It's very clear. Yeshua said, ye shall see tribulation. Now, the reason I'm, I'm bringing this, this table out, before I show you what I just found, and, um, you know, I was so um, motivated to get a video out to you at 3 o'clock in the morning that, that uh, there were three different things that happened that caused me not to do that. So I knew there was something else he wanted to show me. This verse that runs through there, um, if you recall, from the video I did on Yellowstone is talking about the destruction of this rebellious people uh, because of their sins, yada, yada, yada. You'll see it in the next table I'm going to show you. But notice here it has plagues in here. So uh, we are at, it, apparently in this table, close to the seals. The sixth seal is mentioned. Um, there are several dates, and the current year is also up here. Now, fast forward over to the table I'm talking about. Um, now, the Yellowstone table, this is the, the same one you just saw. Uh, this is my file here, not the annotated. Um, and if you recall from the, the, the uh, last presentation we did on this, I'll just update you. Um, Nibiru was found here in reverse. Uh, this is a planetary body that is possibly connected to Wormwood of Revelation 8 and will make an interaction with um, our solar system, I believe, and will cause chaos, plasma, um, discharge, and the like. Uh, we have earthquakes over here, a time of Sukkot. Sukkot is a Hebrew um, a feast, that uh, feast of Yahuwah, that is still yet to be fulfilled. It is the very last one, tabernacles, when we tabernacle with him. So uh, it just happened to be lined up with earthquakes. That's you know, a significant anomaly there. Um, so, Wormwood, uh, excuse me, Namiru, earthquakes, we covered that. Let's go to the other one now. now. This is what I just pulled up last night. Really not a lot of time in it. A few hours last night, or excuse me, into the night into the morning. Let me just back that up, you guys. And I, I don't know why I didn't go into this in this video when I did this. But if you if you notice that that white highlighted verse right there and this area right here, that's green, that's the word plagues. And so this this verse that runs right through here is pronouncing a judgment of plagues that are coming upon the land. Now, I'll pull this Yellowstone table back up at some other time and prove that to you and show you that. But I don't understand why I didn't mention that after I just was talking about plagues. That were it was possible that plagues would come. I did mention the sixth seal and things like that, um, but I, I, you know, again, it was late in the evening. It was late, and I was very tired when I did this, and I was really trying to get this uh, some some information out, and I just blew right past that. So, um, yeah, don't Earth, mention that. That's you know a significant anomaly there. Um, since I tried to do that video. So you're in luck. There's more content here. Just hang in there. It's because I want to show you the correlation between historical uh, fact, things that have already happened with a solar eclipse. You will use it as a harbinger of warning, folks. So we have uh, the eclipse, Tav Shanan Zion, which is 777, Hebrew year. We are currently in. We have the word plague going across there. Uh, what we have highlighted here with the United States running through there is the very same one you just saw in um Yellowstone. You see the bureau right there. It's the same one. See, it's re running in reverse. And here's the, the verse I was just talking about. about um, we're talking about destroying this people because their wickedness, right? Uh, well, here's a, a new anomaly that um, came up. It's really profound. I don't know what it means. Uh, I had to double check it with Darla. You got out the dictionary to make sure I was right before I did this video uh, because I was just kind of blown away by it. But uh, we got Turok, which is trumpets. This is the very same word, Yom Turok, uh, which is, um, if you want to call it Rosh Hashanah, this is the time of trumpets up at the top in this skip of negative 50 folks and this is got jubilee written all over it uh, in reverse is et zara which is a time of trouble right then we have a comet involved there's a comet um there's also next year so we have a uh, the current year and then next year as well uh, next year is also down here with the beer root and wormwood coming together there's also the three letters marked is death uh, we also got the united states down here war that's the other thing. Remember how the connection with the solar eclipse. Uh, traditionally, with these tables that are yeah, yeah, dealing with the end times that I've been showing you, we've seen war three times, which have told me World War III, World War III. However, there have only been a few times where war clusters um, in more than one occasion, and, and it kind of stands out. So we have it here actually in five times in the plain text, and then one time in a smaller ELS. Um, it is actually all over this table, but I uh, streamlined it down to only the smallest skip and kept those. It seemed to make out a pattern. We do have the word Zophon in here, which is hidden um, 
back up to this anomaly. That very same word you see there in the blue is here in the plain text, the plagues. Remember plagues from um, Yellowstone? You can see right there. It's the very same word. We've got Nibiru over here. <clears throat> so that is... So again, the codes, I'll, I'll put a link to the full video you can watch down in the bottom. I want to get over to uh, Jim Staley's video, which was excellent, you guys. He did an excellent job uh, at pointing out all these things. And so I just want to tag on to some of those details um, because it has relevance to what we've seen in the codes. You guys, you can remember some of the codes we just saw about the eclipse and the e election that's coming up and you, you know some of the things that were there. Magog, Magog, very... Um, uh, striking anomaly there in one of those codes, mentioning it in the plain text, uh, in, in the actual scripture. So let's go over to Jim Staley's video uh, real quick, you guys. And again, I'll put a link to that. You can watch the full video and what I said more than six, seven years ago. And, uh, you know, I think Jim actually points out some of the, some of the same things that historically these things are significant. So excellent video from my brother. Shout out to Passion for Truth Ministries. Um, what you're about to learn in this short video today will no doubt be alarming, even shocking for some. For others, they'll dismiss it as just a mere coincidence and go on with their lives as if the total solar eclipse on April 8th of 2024 is just another novelty in the sky. They'll not see the warning or this sign in the heavens as anything other than a rare celestial event to dazzle their kids. But the truth is, is that the total solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024 is part of a larger set of heavenly events that seem to coincide with earthly events, serious earthly events of potential biblical proportion. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Staley with Passion for Truth Ministries. For over 20 years now, I've dedicated my life into looking into the Hebraic roots of the Christian faith. In an effort to do Bible things in Bible ways, I've learned in the process that the calendar that God uses is not the same calendar that we use today. I've learned that the holy days that God gave his people are not the same as the holidays that were given to us by the Roman Gentile church. His feast days are powerful, all about Christ, are prophetic in nature, and transformative in practice. In short, they have revolutionized my entire life, the life of my family, and millions of believers around the world that have ears to hear and eyes to see what God is saying to his church today. God's prophetic feast days are the foundation for all prophecy. They are the true time clock that brings perfect rhythm to all creation. Try to understand prophecy without his calendar, and you'll no doubt find yourself stabbing in the dark like a blind man, or worse, left behind altogether. Before we begin, let's take a poll to see where you're at before we go any further. If you believe these solar eclipses are signs from God, put from God in the comments right now. If you don't, put coincidence. And if you're not sure, put not sure. The patterns that you are about to see in this short video are how they line up with the Hebrew calendar of the Bible is simply incredible. And if you have ears to hear, it will likely move you to a very specific action. With that being said, let's begin. First of all, I want you to know that I believe that the Gog-Magog war is connected to these rare solar eclipses. That right off the bat, he leads into it right off the bat with Gog and Magog, which was an anomaly in one of the codes, you guys. Let's, let's continue, because he says a few more things. We're experiencing, and I'm going to show you exactly how and what I found later on this broadcast. It's almost too hard to believe and could very well alter the way you live your life from this moment on. So be sure to watch all the way through, because everything I talk about will critically build to that. We're moment. not going to play the whole thing, First and foremost, you guys. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to do that. I just want to play a clip of it, uh, and then, you know, you can watch. I'll put a link down the bottom. You can watch the whole It's thing. critical to understand why God made the sun, moon, and stars to begin with. And for that, we turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, where it says, Then God said, Let the lights be in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Okay, so we're talking about the calendar in the sky. It's there for signs, primarily, for seasons, and for days and years, which is our calendar. The Hebrew word here for seasons is the word moedim. It does not mean spring, summer, fall, or winter. It literally means God's appointed feast days, Passover. And when you see his his appointed feast days happening on a, on a blood moon, right? By the way, um, the only feast day that happens at a new moon time is new moon days, and but also Shavuot. Shavuot will always fall on a new moon day, which is a dark moon. We don't see that. But on the flip side of that, when we are in a a eclipse season. 
And these eclipses, primarily the blood moon, falls on a feast day. It is always a significant sign to the Hebrews. And I don't mean just Jews. Silver, unleavened bread, first fruits, Shavuot, better known as Pentecost, trumpets, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. So the first reason why he put the celestial bodies in the heavens was so that we would know when to meet with him. This is why Paul says in First. So we would know when to meet with him. And so when we see a blood moon on Passover, we know we got the day right, you guys. And by the way, for those of you that are on the Zadok calendar and, and you're so and you're doing Passover the first week of April at new moon time, at the time of the eclipse, that should be a bad omen to you. That should be a sign. And, I, and you know, this is not the first time I've, I've had to warn people. There was another group that was celebrating Passover at the wrong time. And I and I, tr I tried to reach out to the brother and tell him that. And a big flood happened at a campground. As you guys know what I'm talking about. Many of you were there. Nobody was killed, but a lot of property was damaged. And I looked at it as a signal from the father. I didn't press it. I didn't message that brother and say, I told you so, because I knew the message had to be very clear at that point. The father did that. If you're celebrating Passover and a bad thing happens, that should be a red flag to you, you guys. So that, that's a message to somebody there. Thessalonians, that although the Lord will come like a thief in the night and no man knows the day of the hour, we know the times and the seasons. For that, he doesn't need to write about us. And because these seasons are all about the first and second coming of Messiah, they are intimately connected with prophecy. But the other reason he says they're there are for signs, which in Hebrew means a signal or an omen. A signal, an omen, a warning. It's a warning to tell us to pause, to pay attention to what is about to happen. This means that the sun, moon, and stars were put into place to give us signals, warnings, and to forecast the two times when the Messiah was going to visit Earth. Once as a humble shepherd and suffering servant that lays... Okay, and so when Yeshua was born, was there not signs in the heavens? Did, did the Magi not, the, the three wise men, followed a star? And some things that were happening in the stars, that's how they found Yeshua, right? And then at the crucifixion, when the sun is blotted out for three hours, something major happened then. It wasn't the moon because this is Passover time and there is no uh, eclipse at a full moon uh, season. Passover is always a full moon. This is why you have a blood moon. Blood moons happen with a full moon, Okay eclipses of the sun happen at new moon time when there you can't see the moon because the moon's passing between the earth and the sun okay so that's not where the sun was at the crucifixion and the moon does not block out the sun for more than three hours what did that what caused an earthquake to happen there was something else happening do you see why nibiru or planet x plays a role in this okay his life down for sheep and the other as a conquering king intent on redeeming his bride if you'd like more information on the feast days of the lord text feast day to 844-763-9543 and you'll immediately receive a free downloadable pdf on all of it the reality of god using celestial events is well established mark 15 33 records that darkness fell over the whole land from the sixth hour until the ninth hour on the day that christ died from the sixth hour to the ninth hour is a three hour darkness over the land what causes that? It wasn't the moon. The moon's on the wrong wrong side of the earth at that point. And that signal in the sky was followed by a massive earthquake that cracked the temple and tore the veil into two that separated the holy place from the... That should have been a bad omen, a red flag. And I'm sure it was to the Pharisees that witnessed what happened. Holy of holies. I think the centurion said, surely this was the son of God. Revelation 6.12 says, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And so we saw the sixth seal in that code that we were just talking about there uh, in Yellowstone in 2017, right? See how this is all falling into place? And the moon became like blood. Here we see another correlation between an earthquake and a solar and lunar eclipse. The moon becoming like blood is referring to a blood red moon, which is when the Earth's moon is in total lunar eclipse. And that is what you're going to see April, uh, excuse me, March 25th. 
Now, I know that it, this is very confusing right now with the way the calendar is. People are adding a 13th month. By the way, there's nowhere in Scripture where it tells you to add a 13th month. The, the, the Moedim are determined by the sun and the moon. Psalm 104, 19 tells you the moon determines the Moedim, the word you just saw. The sun knows it's going for it. We have to use both to reconcile the calendar. And not only that, we also need the equinoxes and the solstice to mark out the seasons, right? But we also have codes that help us reconcile this, you guys. I've done several codes on the calendar, and I'm going to post another video opposite of this one, not in this video, but another one, where if you want to, if you want to learn about that and see if any verification that what I'm telling you is true, I've already confirmed this in the codes, you guys. And I tried to do this for somebody who was deeply in the Zadok calendar because they urgently wanted to see this. And it, yet it, when it came down to the truth, and remember, I've told you about codes, you have to be unbiased. You have to be able to step outside of the box. Sometimes it's not going to confirm what you believe. Why? Because you maybe you were not taught the truth. There's your truth and then there's universal truth. The truth of the Shamayim, of the Father. That's the absolute truth. And that's the only truth that matters. And so when we're searching codes, we can't be dogmatic and stuck somewhere. I didn't have a dog in the fight. I didn't care if it was a Zadok calendar or a lunar solar calendar or a Saturday observance. It didn't matter to me. All I wanted to do was follow the Shabbat and the feast. And so I went to the codes and got my confirmation. And so I'm going to share that with you in another video, but let's continue in, in this presentation. Excellent presentation from Jim Staley. Zechariah 14, 6 through 7 says it this way. It shall come to pass in that day that there'll be no more light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time it shall happen that it will be light. And in Joel 2, verse 10, it says that the sun and the moon will grow dark and the stars will lose their bright. Earthquakes before them. Now, there's something to ask. Is it possible that we could see an earthquake during the, the April? It's very possible. For some reason, and I think Ben at, at uh, Suspicious Observers points out that there, these anomalies, these alignments, um, do have an effect on the Earth. And so, uh, especially, you know, CMEs and things like that from the sun, where we see uh, the, the effects of having an earthquake. So it's very possible. I'm not, I'm not predicting that it's going to happen. I'm just saying it's very plausible. It's something we need to pay attention to. And if it doesn't happen, what happens down the road? What do we have coming up down the road? Well, we got the election. We got the potential that we're, we are going to see. You guys, this, this election is going to be like no other you ever witnessed. Okay, it is going to be a mess. Either way we go, it's going to be a mess. All right. And we may be pulled into very much like in World War I into a regional war that becomes a world war. Now, more than ever, that is that is a high probability. But not only that, um, you know, we see other prophecies that are being fulfilled, particularly about the second coming of, the, of Yeshua. The fact that Isaac Newton did a mathematical equation and predicted a certain year that's coming up very soon. I mean, it's all falling into place. Brightness. There can be no doubt that over and over again throughout the Bible that solar and lunar eclipses are not connected to anything good. Even many of the Native Americans have deep spiritual beliefs that total solar eclipses are either very bad omens and or bring a time of transition and rebirth. Throughout the Bible, we see solar and lunar eclipses connected to events that surround major turning points on the timeline of mankind, with most having to do with the end of time. Again, make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to show you a connection how the very same eclipses of 2017 and 2024 are directly related to the Gog and Magog war of prophecy. It's simply amazing how Again, God is he, the end he, from he the brings up Gog and Magog. And then put the entire timeline in the sky right above our heads every night. In the meantime, though, let's do a quick review of the most famous and rarest of lunar events, the Tetrad Blood Red Lunar Eclipses. They are critical pieces to the end time story. This is when there are four lunar eclipses back to back in two consecutive years. Like Mark Biltz originally pointed out, where it gets really interesting is when these tetra Tread eclipses fall on biblical holidays of Passover and Sukkot, two years in a row. When they land on these holy days, this is when we better start paying attention. Like the Native Americans say, wars and rebirth are possible. And this is exactly what we see in history. There have only been eight sets of these blood red moons since the time of Christ. And some of them have been world changing indeed. They can either be a precursor for a significant 
significant event or a confirmation sign that the event that just happened was significant on God's calendar. For example, on Passover in 162 AD, a set of these lunar eclipses was seen and the very same year, Rome began a war with the Parthians. In 795, another set showed up on the biblical holy days of Passover and Sukkot, and the Saxon War began. One of the most famous of these eclipses landed on Passover in the year 1492, just two weeks before the Catholic monarchs of Spain decided to declare war on the Jews living in Spain and drive them out of So what he's pointing out, essentially, you guys, is every time, every single time one of these things happen, it is very significant in some way, it's, and it usually has something to do with war, famine, or pestilence, historically. Okay, um, you know, what, what would cause a war, war in the United States? Hmm, let's think about that. Okay, some funny business in the election, um, maybe the the murder of a potential presidential candidate. Um, I can think of uh, a few scenarios of uh, the invasion from the southern border. I mean, all kinds of, you know, Kindle for potential split a potential civil war those kinds of things are very possible i don't think you understand the ramifications and i'm not trying to be a doom and gloomer i'm pointing out the obvious I, that's why i showed you the video i did in 2017 i was just speculating on the possibility what are the odds what are the possibility what are the probabilities that this might happen and to my surprise it happened so um you know, I don't take any joy on being right about that, right? I'm just saying, we need to pay attention to these things. ...of the country, better known today as the Spanish Inquisition. Although not taught in American history, Columbus just so happened to sail on August 2nd of that year, the exact date set for the expulsion of the Jews from Spain. And who were all the crew members that he chose to sail with him? You guessed it, Jewish. Why? Because Christopher Columbus was actually Jewish. But the and again, you can watch this. I'll put a link to this video down below. I want to transition now to some of the codes that I've been working on because you guys, the reason I haven't put out a video in what, like two weeks, 10 days, something like that. I've been very busy. Okay. First of all, we started a school back. <clears throat> so I'm very busy with, with that, coming up with lesson plans, inter interacting with students, talking with people on the phone. Every day that I get up in the morning, just two hours of emails as I'm having my coffee, and then I'm, you know, I check back with that later. By the way, if you've emailed me in any kind of way, check your email. I've already responded, okay? So um, this long-distance ping-pong is a little frustrating where people don't check their e emails. I'm in there twice a day, and I'm responding to each one of them. Sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a job just to do that. So be patient with me, you guys. <clears throat> okay. Also, I'm working personal codes now. We're back on doing that. So right now before me, I, I, I'm probably looking at 20, 25 codes from personal to some of the codes that I'm talking about. Some of them I'm going to just show you here in just a minute, like uh, the, the latest Trump code that um, Scott actually found and wanted me to, to look, look at. And uh, let's go there right now. We'll, we'll segue right there now. This is the latest Trump code. Um, again, with bad omens, um, and then things like this. This is in a very small area, uh, just like the last code that had his name. Also, the, the anomaly next to it say, saying the phrase, uh, the name of the assassin, right, implies there might be an assassination, right? So Scott found Trump's murder, which is the access term, the murder of Trump is the access term. We have the president in blue going across that. And twice, one going in one direction, one going in the other direction. At that same skip, we have the word assassins in the white, going one direction and then going in the other direction. Right there. We have the election is here. We have an eclipse, the eclipse season, right? And also, atsara, which means warning in the blue, crossing that is a warning, right? Again, we, we see the anomaly of the three wars. Melchemich in the uh, black and green there um, seems to be a common pattern where we see this, you know, sometimes clustering together, sometimes spread out. But, but the th number three, always a thing. Right. We have the name Biden right there connected to the to the very passage that has war 
in there. Obama's name is also there, right there with Biden, right? We all know what that means, right? We have war here with the words signals or warnings. That word otio also means letters, but it can also be interpreted as signals or warnings, right? So if we're talking about the murder of Trump, right, where is that likely in, you know, in my time of reflection and meditation in that and knowing that Trump frequents this area, I search for the word Miami, which is here in a really interesting way. It's twice and sharing a letter. So you see it in the yellow, sharing the olive uh, right here. So Miami is there twice. And then I have a highlighted verse as well, which is uh, really interesting because all of this is in the, the Torah. This is all in the law. It's very much like the last one. This is Davarim, chapter 31, 28 and 29. And here's what it says there. It does have the, the end of days, which is a, a, a marking of time, right? So what does it say there in chapter 31, 28 and 29? Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death, Ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from which I had commanded you to do, and evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of Yah to provoke him to anger through the him to anger through the work of your hands. So uh, that kind of stands out to me, right, when it comes to the end days. Uh, what are some of the other ones I'm looking at? Let's just see here. I've got, um, I'm also looking at Otiot, uh Eclipse, which means the signal of the eclipse or the warning of the eclipse. Hang tight so I can screenshot that. The Otiot of the eclipse with uh, judgment right there. We do have the United States uh, going across it. And notice I don't have any verses highlighted because, you know, when I'm, I'm looking at how many right here, right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in front of me, all right, at one time. So I bounce between each one of these and go back and forth. So this particular one is in an initial stages. And again, um, you can see war appearing three times. The signal of the eclipse, uh, the warning of the eclipse, the, um, the judgment, right? And war appearing there three times. I will give you further... Um, information on that i did find the demon uh comment that's also in process uh, in progress with the end of days here a couple times in the text with the stars initially this is this is all i got right and again some of these are hot off the press look at the skip on this 66 46 so there's three sixes in that demon comment who would have thought that right um, what, what is another one I'm working on? Let's see what this one is. Uh, this one is um, Tav Shin Pei He, which is 2024 Otiot. So the 2024 signals. And then we have the word Pesach you know, or Passover in there again. And then blood moons uh, that runs there. It's definitely a signal. And again, um, still have to work this code. There's, there's a lot the workload is, is incredible, you guys. <laughs> so that's why you haven't seen me doing a video. So um, that's what I got for you right now. I will try to work on some more, you know, codes and get them finished for you. We got a couple more weeks to go before um, the the April 8th eclipse. Uh, but again, it, uh, March 25th, you will see a blood moon over the United States. And it is on Passover. And this is based off the equinox and the solar lunar counter of the Bible. You guys will go into that at a, at, in another video. I'm not going to get into a calendar teaching in this. I just wanted to pass this information along to you and uh, let you know I'm still here and still working. I've just been very, very busy. And so, um, yeah, uh, again, we are still taking students. If you're interested in, in learning Bible codes and you're, you've already messaged me or you haven't messaged me yet, do that. There'll be a link down below, an email. Do that. Check your email immediately because as soon as I see it, I'm going to respond to it, okay? All right, and then we'll have a phone conversation, get you right into class, 
Friday is our next class, and it's class number, I want to say number three officially, not counting the the orientation. Um, and so uh, there's still time. You you haven't missed much. And, and all of those classes are on archive, on video. You can see those. You didn't miss anything. We're learning letters, vocabulary. Um, you're going to be getting code programs, and I'm going to be teaching you how to use it, right? Also, personal codes. We're working on that. And um, people are asking roughly every few days. I'll get an email. Somebody wants a, a personal code. So there's plenty of space. I do have a list that's growing, but there's plenty of space to get personal codes done. So if you're interested in that, message me. We'll get that done for you. Uh, I, I would be honored to do that for you. I think it would bless you. So with that, shalom to you. And uh, listen, I'm so thankful, by the way. Um, the past month that I've been back doing this um, subscriber increase and more than almost, you know, working on 6,000 now and uh, growing every day. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Welcome to the channel. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, help, help us share this, this channel. If you would. Uh, thank you for watching the videos. Uh, may y'all bless you. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Shalom to you. And uh, be blessed.